Well, excitingly, South Island farmer Kate Acklin has been successful in her bid as Beef and Lamb New Zealand director. Uh, Kate replaces the sitting director, Phil Smith, as a farmer elected representative uh, in the Northern South Island district, winning by a clear margin ahead of uh, Smith's votes in the 2021 election that was al- announced last week. Uh, Kate has previously served as an Associate Director on Beef and Lamb New Zealand's board in 2018 and together with her husband David and their three children, uh, the family run Mount Summers Station uh, among many other businesses. There's near the Canterbury Foothills and we're joined now in Serious Country uh, by Kate Eckland. Kate, congratulations on the role. It must be uh, an exciting time ahead. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's a hugely exciting, um, and I suppose a really challenging time to be involved. So I can't really wa- can't wait to get my uh, teeth into it. Yeah. So ta- talk us through when, why you put your name forward, and why at this time. Uh, well, I guess my year as associate director just showed me um, how important it was to be involved, and how much. We, I mean, Beef and Name is a great organisation, and it's so important for us. And I suppose shaping the policy and the future for that our farming businesses and face. Um, so I was just really keen to be involved and uh, sort of just put my name forward and see how I went. Fantastic. And uh, what a great effort as well. Now, Beef and Lamb are undergoing a lot of different changes and their particular role in the future, what do you think they need to double down and focus on as an organisation? Well, the environmental challenges and reforms that we're facing in the sector are sort of the obvious one and it's going to have a substantial impact on all of our businesses so I guess what prompted me to be involved was actually making sure that the policy that's being developed is informed by science and it's also achieving the outcomes that we all want in the environment I mean we all want better outcomes for our water and our biodiversity and climate change but the policy needs to be workable and practical uh, at the ground level and and it needs to be realistic time frames without sort of losing focus on actually the importance of our rural communities uh, so that's that's the space. Um, I'm quite keen as a dairy farmer as well as a sheep and beef farmer just to, to build on some of that work where the uh, the organisations are working more collaboratively. Mm-hmm. So that there's been a step up in that space, I think, in the last six months or so. And I guess just my position of being both dairy and beef, uh, sheep and beef, um, it will help sort of bridge that gap, I suppose. What have you heard uh, that you farmers would like beef and lamb to represent them more in? Well, I mean, that's a good question, and it's a difficult question. Um, there's confidence within sheep and beef in the sector over the last nine months has been at historic low levels, and I, and I think a large extent that this has been driven by the concern that the pace and the scale of policy changes around the climate and environment and even farm sales into forestry um, as a result of the carbon price. So that's something I'm hearing time and time again. And and the thing is too, uh, Taste Pure Nature has been a successful development where beef and lamb have moved into more market focused roles. Uh, where do you think there that stops and starts with suppliers own roles in market? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm the best person to answer that question. But I mean, my, my view is that uh, we do need to be telling that story about why we are the most sustainable producers of red meat in the world, um, and that we all have the same goals with the environment. And I think it's quite helpful to be t- uh, telling that on the domestic market as well, um, because a lot of the research that's coming out globally, it's all based on feedlot systems that just don't reflect how we farm in New Zealand. Um, and globally, I suppose. There's challenges and there's opportunities. Um, I guess there's an increasing interest in how food's produced and the environmental impact. So, so there is an opportunity for New Zealand, but I mean, the budget is not unlimited. So I think my personal view is I've done a good job in honing in on a couple of key markets and whether that can be replicated um, and picked up further by the commercial partners. Mm. What have you learned in your time as Associate Director in how to navigate uh, communications with government around policy? I'm not sure I learned a a whole lot in my year as Associate Director, Uh, and I'm I'm hoping to sort of pick up and build on that. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. and and, and of course uh, your... 
husband David being in his role in Federated Farmers and uh, your connection with beef and lamb, it is a challenging uh, environment going forward. However, May 2021 start to bring some form of certainty and clarity. Do you believe that could be in the cards? Well, I think there's no doubt that farmers want certainty. I mean, we need to know what we're dealing with and then we can actually start adapting and, and thriving under whatever changes might be coming to us. Um, yeah, we have to, David being involved in feds. We do have some good discussions at home, as you can imagine. But uh, as I said before, I think there's actually starting to be some really great collaboration within the sector. And I think we'll see that uh, just build and grow as we go on. I'd love to also touch on, while we've got you here, Kate, um, your role as a director of Wool Research uh, and uh, Organisation, RONS, and uh, your role on the, the Strong Wool Action Group as well. Are you feeling confident that uh, we're making progress for wool? What I'm feeling confident about is there's an absolute appetite uh, within our current government to invest in wool, and, and there's an appetite amongst farmers and the industry um, and it's hard not to feel positive about that. Um, there's some really exciting stuff coming out of ROMS, out of the wool research and new uses, and, and uh, that will be a great one for you to get here, maybe the chairman of ROMS, to talk further. Um, there's some really exciting things happening. We're at the pre-commercialisation stage there of some great technologies. And the Strong Wool Action Group, I mean, it's, it's starting to gain a bit of momentum. Uh, I think the key is that we need everything to succeed. So there's not just going to be one answer to this wool question. There's going to be a whole, we need a whole lot of things to succeed and line up. Yeah, and as uh, Rob Hewitt said on Serious Country before, you know, if we don't uh, get that situation sorted with wool, it has a flow-on effect to the meat industry and the trees are on their way. So it's, a, of course, interconnected in its role. Um, lastly, Kate, before you go, I'd love to understand from your perspective, uh, I know you have a, a very strong values and statement and vision statement for um, uh, your, your property, your family farm, have you seen an attitude change in how we are to communicate our vision and values from our family farms uh, to the wider community and in our interconnectedness with the wider community as well, in particular like around catchment groups, for instance? No, look, absolutely. And I think the fact we sort of clearly articulate our vision and values is it's no longer a unique thing. There's more and more farmers. I mean, we all farm this way, and it's actually just, just putting that into words and communicating that story out there. And I think the catchment groups are a really great sort of tool to bring that out. I mean, as farmers, we, we're never good at sort of um, telling our story or, or, or talking about our successes, but we need to be because we do some great things, and we, we're so privileged to look after the land as we do. So, yeah, I think, I think there's a movement. I really do. Yeah, and an exciting time ahead. Kate, congratulations on your appointment as the Director of Beef and Lamb New Zealand, representing our farmers across this beautiful country. Uh, it's very exciting to have your voice at the table on behalf of so many. So that's Kate Eklund there farming uh, at Mount Summers Station and uh, appointed to Beef and Lamb New Zealand. Oh, nice boots. Yeah, thanks. And you? <laughs> Ben. Ben, you all right? Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Just me getting pretty hardy. Eh? Yeah. I just said to myself, Ben, work hard. You deserve new boots. <laughs>